And there's more breaking news. We have just confirmed that in the past three hours, Iran has now seized two oil tankers in the Strait of Hormuz. The second oil tanker is a Liberian flag tanker, but it is British operated, meaning that both of the oil tankers that have been seized by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard are British operated oil tankers. Let's get back to Trey Yinks. He's live in our Mideast newsroom with the breaking update. Trey. Trace, we were able to just confirm this development right now. A Liberian flagged British operated tanker uh, also seized today just about 40 minutes after that first tanker uh, was seized by the Revolutionary Guard. This a major escalation by the Iranians. Uh, and I just got a statement here uh, regarding the first tanker. This company releasing a statement about the Stena Impero. Uh, saying that they were concerned about the safety of the crew on board that vessel. There are 23 sailors aboard the first vessel that was taken in by the Iranians with this second vessel. We don't know much about how many people were on board, but we do know that about 40 minutes after, this is around 4 to 440 local time, this vessel taking a sharp right turn after the Strait of Hormuz towards the Iranian coast. The big question, though, here, Trace, why are the Iranians doing this? Just last week, they attempted also to uh, intercept a British flagged vessel near the Strait of Hormuz that was actually uh, pushed off by a small British warship that was traveling with that tanker. And then remember, there's also an Iranian tanker currently being held by British forces near the Strait of Gibraltar. So uh, multiple potential storylines here for the Iranians. They could be looking to get to the negotiating table to get their tanker released by the British near the Strait of Gibraltar. Or the overarching concern for the Iranians is they want to put pressure on the West when it comes to the Iran nuclear deal. Amid all of this news about tankers being seized in the Gulf, you have to remember the Iranians this month have broken two key commitments in the nuclear deal by surpassing the uranium enrichment and stockpile limits laid out in the nuclear agreement. Each one of these provocative actions certainly putting another bargaining chip on the table for the Iranians in potential talks coming up. Trace. Indeed. Trey Yings live for us in the Middle East. Back to you with breaking news. Again, he makes a good point saying there is concern about the 23 crew members on board the Stena Imperial. That's the first British ship that was taken by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard today because the British government says they have not had any contact with those crew members at all since this ship was seized. I want to bring in uh, our chief White House correspondent, John Roberts, because the president has just commented on this. We don't have the tape, but John's going to kind of give us the, the paraphrasing of what the president said. John. Yeah, yeah uh, Trace, uh, the president is still talking on the South Lawn. The helicopter has not taken off yet, so we're still probably five, ten minutes away from actually hearing from the president. But he took some questions and is continuing to take questions. And uh, he did talk about this. He said they heard it was one tanker. Then they heard it that it might be two tankers. And now you've said that that Liberian flag vessel operating for a U.K. company appears to be the second tanker that Iran has seized. The president reminding that the United States has got a lot of warships, a lot of firepower out there, which uh, clearly is a signal to Iran not to escalate this too far. Uh, I think the White House is trying to make uh, head and tails of uh, what's going on here. A statement from Garrett Marquis, uh, the spokesman for John Bolton at the NSC, said, We are aware of reports that Iranian forces seized a British oil tanker. This is the second time in just over a week that the U.K. has been the target of escalatory violence by the Iranian regime. The United States will continue to work with our allies and partners to defend our security and interests against Iran's malign behavior. Of course, this follows yesterday, as Jennifer Griffin mentioned at the top of the show, uh, the takedown of that Iranian drone that the U.S. said was uh, working uh, in too close proximity to an American warship, uh, which is why it was taken down. And I think Iran kind of surprised as well that it was taken down not by a missile, but by electronic countermeasures, that new system that the United States has just deployed there in the Persian Gulf. So I think what we're going to hear from the president uh, when we get the tape back, and again, the helicopter still on the ground. The tape won't get back until the helicopter has taken off. So we're probably still five, ten minutes away from that, depending on how long the president talks. I think you're probably going to hear from the president a, a very strong warning to Iran uh, not to take this any further. If Iran were to decide to, decide to uh, seize an American oil tanker, uh, that would be a dramatic escalation of this little cat and mouse game that Iran has been playing. Uh, and I think that you would probably see a very sharp response from the United States uh, in regard to that. Now, again, a lot of this depends on whether or not lives are at risk. Remember what the president said after the global hawk was brought down 
about the 20th of June uh, there in the uh, Straits of Hormuz. Uh, the president saying that he was not going to launch a retaliatory strike that would uh, result in the loss of life, uh, which is why the takedown of the drone yesterday was seen as sort of a proportional response in terms of this cat and mouse game. So if Iran were to seize uh, a, U a U.S. oil tanker, that would be a dramatic escalation. Now, then we're talking about whether or not the crew would be in physical danger uh, from Iran. If they were, that could prompt a very sharp escalation in the U.S. response. But I think uh, the Iranian regime is smart enough at this point to maybe play some games with the, with the U.K., which is also kind of weird because the U.K. remains a signatory to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the Iranian nuclear deal. So not quite sure at this point what the Iranian game is. But until they actually attack a U.S. asset uh, that might result in the loss of lives, I think we'll see a measured response from the United States. And I, I hear the helicopter spooling up behind me uh, for takeoff, so it's likely we'll hear from the president very soon. Trace? And it's a good point, John, to make that, you know, really the U.K. is one of the economic life rafts for Iran because they haven't implemented those snapback sanctions that could go in effect if they violated this nuclear agreement. So you would think they would handle the U.K. with kid gloves. You talk about escalation, John, about if this was a U.S. tanker, that it would be a dramatic escalation. What's the gap? Is there a vast gap between the fact this is not a U.S. tanker and it's a British tanker and another British operated tanker? Tanker. How far is the gap between these two allies as far as is this being a big concern for escalation for the United States? Well, it's clearly a big concern for the United States, but I don't think it's, it's, it could be considered to be a, a trigger point. The seizure of a U.S. flagged or U.S. operated vessel could be seen as some sort of a, a, a trigger point. Uh, don't forget, too, you know, when you talk about signatories to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, uh, the U.K. is one, France is one as well, and recently Emmanuel Macron had conversations with, uh, with Rouhani, the president of Iran, and he was warning Iran that, uh, that France may have to take action if Iran pass passes that nuclear threshold and continues to go down the road, and everybody believes, of developing a nuclear weapon. So even though those countries remain signatories to the Iran nuclear plan, they have made it clear to Iran that they are only going to tolerate so much before taking action. And uh, I thought I heard the, the helicopter spooling up, but no, it, it appears it's still on the ground. So the president is still talking. So clearly, Trace, we're going to hear a lot from him very shortly. Yep. And when the president talks, we'll get back to you after that. John Roberts live for us in the North Lawn. John, thank you. Meantime, State Department correspondent Rich Edson is reporting live for us at the State Department. Rich, what do you know? What are you hearing from there? Uh, good afternoon, Trace. And a senior U.S. official is telling us that the seizure of these tankers amounts to piracy in international waters, and it's a significant escalation, certainly against the United Kingdom. The senior U.S. official says this shows that Iran seems to not be able to get along with many people, certainly in that region. This also comes today, Trace, as the United States was organizing an effort here today on preventing just this very issue. It was a, a summit here with uh, a senior U.S. official telling us uh, at at least 100 different diplomats from 60 different nations about maritime security in the Strait of Hormuz. And what the United States is stressing and trying to organize all of this is that not only the U.S. can be the one defending and protecting ships in the Strait of Hormuz, this has to be an international effort. As the administration has pointed out, that most of the goods, certainly the oil that traverse the Strait of Hormuz, really go to Asia and Europe. So the United States is looking for countries around the world to step up up and work on that type of security. In fact, uh, U.S. officials have been saying that they're, they're hoping that they can get this together, uh, that there will be follow-on meetings after this. Today was more of the diplomatic setting, but there's going to be a military strategy uh, component to all of this. And this is all as the United States has been expanding its military footprint in that region uh, because of uh, what the U.S. has said has been Iran's increasing destabilizing activity. Uh, so uh, all of this just within the hours of this meeting here at the State Department today, Trace, uh, trying to combat just this mm -hmm. very issue now with uh, the shipping company saying this U.K. tanker heading north towards Iran. 
Yeah, it's amazing. We'll get back to you with breaking news. Rich Edson live for us at the State Department. I want to put that map back out of the, up of the Strait of Hormuz because we're talking about this. And as we set the table, it's important to know that is a very narrow strait and about 60 percent of the world's oil comes through that strait. That's why it is such a critical waterway. To set you back up to what we know today, the breaking news is that a short time ago, maybe a couple of hours, we know the Iranian Revolutionary Guard has admitted that they see a British tanker, an oil tanker with 23 crew members aboard. The British government has not been able to contact that tanker. They have had no contact at all with the crew members. They are concerned about their safety. We are hearing reports that tanker has turned and is now heading toward the coast of Iran. On top of that, a second tanker, a Liberian flag tanker that is operated by a British company, has also been seized by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. We do not know the number of crew members on that tanker. We will effort that and continuing coverage of the breaking news, the escalation between Iran and the West.